So and nowadays, you know, you can program a computer or a video game, but however, uh, programming a cell or cells is a fascinating concept that could potentially save millions of lives. So how do you program a cell, essentially? You know, you program a cell by basically introducing DNA or RNA elements for the most part and or directly protein, but let's focus on the DNA and RNA. So the, uh, you know, the, the instructions, so to speak, of a cell are typically embedded in this genome in DNA. And what we and others recognize is that we could make circuits just as an electro engineer would out of electronic components, but now out of biological components, primarily DNA based elements, promoters, genes, terminators. And these circuits could be programmed to have addressable memory. They could be programmed to sense things. They could be programmed to produce output. And so you could then introduce a synthetic circuit into a living cell that could enable it now to be programmed, to sense something in its environment, make a decision on what was sensed and to produce something that would act on its environment. And uh, regarding this new technology, um, there's probably some concerns of people thinking that if you manipulate this new, new technology in an uh, unethical ways, we could have really catastrophic results. So for example, you probably heard the gain of function of research facing a lot of ethical questions in recent months. So uh, my question is, are the current regulations we have adequate for preventing researchers from conducting experiments that could lead to dangerous and even catastrophic outcomes? You know, I, I think they are in that starting in the mid to late seventies with an Asilomar conference, folks working in what became biotechnology introduced a number of regulations for biosafety and biocontainment for these early efforts. And I think these are relevant to our current efforts in synthetic biology, which will do different safety levels, one, two, three, four, depending upon the risk of serious disease or illness from the pathogens working on. Synthetic biology basically takes genetic engineering to a next level where we now introduce the ability for control. So I do think the present regulations are appropriate and we also can use synthetic biology to make such cells safer and better contained by actually developing synthetic gene circuits that themselves serve as safety switches so that a cell that escapes from a lab can't survive outside the lab or a cell that was programmed to function inside your body will not be able to survive outside of your body and or could be eliminated from your body by taking a small molecule should you have adverse effects or you finished your therapy. And so we and others in the community have introduced the safety elements and biocontainment elements in order to address several of the points you raised. Yeah, so uh, my next question is regarding the, the vibrating insole. So you also created a vibrating insole for enhancing balance. And, and, and once again, that's interesting because you also did cross-country track and field in Holy, in Holy Cross. And what's also interesting is I also do cross-country track and field in my school. I'm in my third year. So as both of us know, balance and stability is a key for any great runner. So I just want to ask, uh, how does the vibrating insole help enhance balance? And should I buy a pair? So the vibrating insole helps by delivering low amounts of noise. Noise not in the form of a loud sound, but noise mm -hmm. in the form of random vibrations. In this case, mechanical vibrations. Similar to what would be random noise electrically, which would be static on the old radios or TVs that we had when I was growing In this case, the mechanical vibration sensitizes the neurons in the bottom of your feet, making them now more sensitive to pick up signals they normally would not pick up. By giving them the ability to sense more, they can now take those, that information in, operate or act on it, creating a more stable response so that you now can better sense where you are in space as you walk or as you run. We have demonstrated that these vibrations, these low level vibrations function well in 18 to 21 year olds, enhancing your ability to balance. But more critically, we show you can take a 75 year old who might be at significant risk of falling and use the vibrating insoles to have them balance as well as a 25 year old. And so the prime application is to see if you can help your grandparents, maybe my parents, my dad in a way as his balance deteriorates. Having said that, it could also enhance your balance. I don't think it would make a significant difference on your running, uh, mm -hmm. uh, but if you were looking to do a significant balance activity, maybe it's climbing or uh, skateboarding, uh, um, uh, gymnastics, then they, they could actually be worth trying for somebody of your age and health status. Uh, so something like, uh, I would say surfing, which I enjoy would help enhance the balance. 
It could. I mean, there you probably want to, obviously you need to make sure everything's waterproof yeah. um, because you're going to need a power source. So, uh, you know, surfing could be pretty hard on anything that's electronic given the breakdown of electronic components in the face of salt water. But yes, an application like that, maybe it's virtual surfing that you might do in a VR lab. Drunk mistakes, we're bound to hit.